Hello, Internet Sir Mutton Chops here. Welcome back to Unrest. We've got a lesser blade fiend here who drops a Pugius and or Gladius, which some would consider to be meh weapons, very mediocre by most people's standards, but you may see them floating around in EC, the, the auctions, the, the at zone, which is very much as vortex <laughs> for time and space. But uh, whatever, you know, they're still solid weapons for newbies and lowbies alike. They don't really sell for anything as far as my m memory is concerned, but uh, money isn't everything. Memory might be, though. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, we, we are uh, getting up all in these mobs Kool-Aid, and we do know the flavor. Mm, that would be a, a, probably the worst flavor for Kool-Aid. Death. <laughs> Undead, the new Kool-Aid flavor. You know, like the smell of death, you ever pass by like a bush with a dead animal in it or something? You don't really go inspect, but you do smell that whiff of just horrible bitterness and uh, yeah now imagine that in a glass pitcher with some ice <laughs> oh no not really too different from those harry potter jelly belly beans god i can't remember uh when i saw those but there was like uh some market somewhere i don't know where but uh it had all these weird nasty flavors i had i had to kind of inspect it and take a look at at it and it was uh oh god like 16 or 17 horrible horrible flavors like snot dirt, bird droppings, uh, I think grass was one of them as well. Yeah. <laughs> and for only 17 some odd dollars, you too can own Hogwarts jelly beans. And I think I'm going to pass, actually. I, I, I could spend that on something else. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, how did we get off topic there? I don't even, I don't even know. <laughs> Let, let's move on, shall we? Yeah, I think we will. <laughs> My cleric is... Uh, well, he's still in the larval stage here, larval stage of newbiness, but he's starting to molt, to, to rustle around in that cocoon, so to speak, and uh, soon enough he'll have wings, like Red Bull or tampons, <laughs> or both, and yeah, he may be a quasi-twink, uh, a Diet Coke of twink, but he can still hold his own, I think. Uh, I, I don't have... Uh, entire working knowledge of clerics, but I did play one in the past, so I think I'll be able to stand my ground and, uh, and do good. Do good in this in this world of Norath, where there's nothing but evil around every corner and, and death, and death Kool-Aid. <laughs> and yeah, I, I've seen some tough times on my clerics in the past, so I do know how to navigate around. It's kind of like a, a lemon, like a car that's just really God awful. You, you, if you could, you'd duck down if you saw some friends or your schoolmates, <laughs> you know, nearby, you, you know, you'd duck down. Unless you're driving the damn thing, then you can't really duck down unless it's like a lowrider. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe you could do that. You could, you could have like rims on a really beat up car and kind of make it seem like you're doing it on purpose, kind of like vintage jeans or something. I don't know. But yeah, now I've got a convertible for a cleric. I've got some stuff that helps me along the way. It supplements my lack of natural wisdom, as as I noticed when I first created this gnome. All gnomes seem to have very, very low wisdom. So yeah, gonna gonna have to struggle through all this and, and see how I come out in the end. I don't think it's very hard actually to to top off all that wisdom. Uh, I've heard a lot of good things, so we'll see. But. Uh, yeah, we picked up some extra DPS here in the form of a monk by the name of Thelonious, after the jazz musician, no doubt. And yeah, it's just us two stragglers there for a while, me and this dwarf, who uh, toughed it out, and now we're reaping the benefits of that tenacity, of that uh, stubbornness. <laughs> and that's going to pay off even more soon enough with uh, lots of other group mates. We're going to have a full group, I think, here soon enough, and going to continue kicking arse and taking names. Well, not names. There are no named mobs that we attacked. I know there's a, a dwarf here that drops dwarven uh, work boots, uh, but we're not going to go anywhere near that. <laughs> not with a 10-foot pole or anything. But, uh, hey, it's all good. We haven't died. Knock on wood. Well, that's more like plexiglass or, or something. Uh, <laughs> some sort. Uh, sawdust and, and glue mixture? I don't know. Uh, this table certainly is not made of wood. I can guarantee you that. I can tell you that much. Uh, <laughs> I don't even have to look at the bottom for that little sticker. No, <laughs> I could tell just by the way it wobbles. But anyway, yes, I am twinked. Uh, no, it's not a problem. <laughs> I don't need an intervention. But 
you know, it's it's not a whole lot of stuff. There's J boots, a pair of J boots here. That's not too bad. Definitely good for some ghetto kiting later on in the future. Uh, what else do I have? I have a dusty breastplate, some good stamina stats there, and hit points, and solid, solid AC. Got to have your armor count up. That's very important as a cleric. A lot of people forget that. They think it's all about the wisdom. Well, you're gonna start taking hits. You need that AC. Also, have a testament of Van here, Van Ear here, <laughs> Van here, and uh, a few other miscellaneous items that uh, aren't too overpowered, in my opinion, but solid nonetheless. Very good for this level. And I've got plenty of wisdom. And uh, yeah, we've continued on. We picked up a, a ranger here who's gonna skedaddle here soon enough and get some power leveling from a friend. But they're not gonna take any of our mobs. That was really nice of them. I uh, went and pulled from some other direction and, and got tons of experience and even let some of our group mates uh, get some get some good loot. I think, uh, what is it? The, the, no, it's the cleric that's coming up. We got a cleric uh, along the way and he got a, oh god, oh what do they call it? Bloodstained mantle? Yeah, he got one of those and some bronze and ring mail here and there. We also picked up, uh, we also picked up an enchanter. That's good, the erudite. So we've got crack. We're good. <laughs> yeah. Oh god, I tell you what, man. It's one of the best spells in this game. Slow is really good. Uh, Breeze, Clarity, Clarity 2. Those are really, really good spells. Uh, along with So. I think it's those three, and that's it. Uh, clerics have good spells too, but it's just they're not lasting. You can't go around and do your own thing with them. Uh, and Symbol's okay. Symbol's not too bad. But, uh, well, it's, it's, it's just not stacked up compared to those. <laughs> but we're doing good. We were propped up by skill and items. And uh, no one here is in any real jeopardy, as is sometimes the case with my monk, who is a fun challenge. Uh, that, that is certainly uh, the, the truth, but I'm not really familiar with the zones, and I think once I start getting a more working knowledge of different high-end zones, I'll be more comfortable with the class. It is something of a conundrum to play, uh, pulling from areas you're not familiar with. And I kind of play Dirty Harry when I'm on my monk, uh, <laughs> even though I'm very tentative about getting into things. Usually when I finally do, I get my hands dirty. And I do try to manage my grow pretty well, and I'm not the best pooler out there. That's, that certainly is uh, not uh, <laughs> not arguable, but uh, well, my actions are very gun-ho and heavy-handed sometimes. And that's just the nature of the beast, having all that power, all that brute force. Uh, and it is a thankless job pooling, but no, more often than not, I get the job done. It's not pretty, but, but I get the job done. That's, that's how come it's very dirty, hairy-like. And, and with that, with that whole that whole metaphor, that whole analogy, uh, I think that a lot of people expect absolute perfection. Uh, they, want, uh, they want that Detective Callahan to have sharp elbows, but, but not too sharp. They want him to get the job done, but still follow the rules. And, well, that's kind of hard to do sometimes. It really is. <laughs> But uh, people are pretty forgiving on this server. That said, sometimes you will get the that that groaning voice, you know, Callahan, <laughs> and you just gotta learn to deal with it. You know, you gotta you gotta learn to deal. Got to take the abuse, however however veiled it may be. But people aren't really that way for the most part. They like getting experience, and as long as you don't train their arse hard, they're they're good. <laughs> I think there's a lot more leeway uh, for clerics, though, to be honest, because uh, clerics they're they're like the mainstay of a group. You gotta have heals, and that's just a given fact in this game. Heals are very important. In fact, people sometimes get really angry at you if you're soloing as a cleric, um, and there have been people that have done that. And I may try that here and there, but I certainly do like grouping. It lets me kind of relax more, which is weird because I do have people's lives in my hands. But, well, I don't know why, but I just get really casual and comfortable, and it's it's a lot of fun for me. Most people probably wouldn't enjoy it, but uh, I'm weird like that. I'm very strange. Anyhow, <laughs> I don't even know how I got into that topic. But, uh, well, this group is going strong. We've got some momentum going. That is very good. Relocated over here to the side door, and we have some some death beetle problems here in the future. We'll get into that in a little bit. They are pescary little bastards. Uh, the nuisance of this zone, that is for sure. They will interrupt your spells and just cause havoc. But we're progressing. It's a good sign that we relocated. Very good sign. We're getting stronger and uh, getting more experience. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm pretty happy. I, I, I'm liking this zone so far. Probably should have researched it a little bit more, but I did it after the fact. I got some pro tips from the old Alakazam website. 
A lot of people there made light of the fact that it's just not a good idea to cast spells on stairways. Uh, for some reason, you'll you'll get a lot of aggro from downstairs or upstairs or wherever you're at, and it's going to be delayed. So, <laughs> yeah, the long, massive delayed train of of death. Just, just not good. And it's kind of a no-brainer anyway not to cast on stairways because it's going to block, at least partially, your line of sight. So most people probably wouldn't do that anyway, but if you're in a jam, you might just kind of panic and try to throw a, a heal on your tank or cast on the mob to take it down real quick. N not, not advised. Not advised. <laughs> so remember that. If you're thinking about playing EverQuest for the first time or you're coming back after a 10-year uh, period, Remember, don't cast on stairways. Uh, it's probably advisable even in other zones, too. I'm not too sure. Stairways seem to be pretty glitchy, so that's, that's advised. Um, <laughs> because these stairways will lead to uh, to heaven <laughs> or hell. But uh, before that, you will be attacked and brutalized. And things will happen to you that you will not be able to mention to repeat to your kids one day, even if you <laughs> don't have any, um, it, to your pets or whatever, your friends. So yeah, there are some other hiccups in this zone as far as pathing is concerned. Uh, there are some, some walls that you might want to hug. I think there's a left wall you want to hug in the basement instead of the right one because you can get some aggro there. There's a couple other ones. And in fact, I'm just going to go ahead and link the, the Alakazam uh, website altogether <laughs> for unrest because uh, I don't want to go into all that stuff and I can't even remember half of it. I just kind of have to brush back up on it every time I re-enter this zone so I can remember and, and get it ingrained in my mind. Uh, yeah, it certainly is certainly is important to try to remember all that stuff, but it's kind of hard when you have other things going on. <laughs> it's like, oh god, more stuff, but... Uh, well, I say all this not because I think people are, you know, greatly ignorant, except for myself, but uh, just because uh, it's it's good to have a an idea of what you're getting into, and it can be very easy to have a different opinion of a zone based on mishaps that you did not foresee. Uh, I'm certainly guilty of that as well. I don't like befallen for that reason. <laughs> but uh, this could be a very uh, very, very enjoyable and rewarding zone. It has the potential to be at least. It can also be just absolute shite. I'm, I'm very aware of that. We had plenty of uh, trains <laughs> in this in this group, so I'm not going to argue that, not in the least bit. But it's those little tidbits of info, those veteran, those veteran pro tips that can really help you out, and I'm going to I'm going to take them to heart, and I'm going to heed those words. Although. That said, I did just wing it. I did just go into this zone pretty much blind. I didn't research it all beforehand. And you really want to be ready. You want to be prepared, just like the Lion King. <laughs> and we will walk away from these fights with a few scars. <laughs> God, yeah. I did that. I, I had to make the reference to Lion King. Anyway, uh, I saw my opportunity and I took it. And, and that's what heroes do, you know? And I'm, I'm a hero. I'm a cleric hero. But, uh... Yeah, in, in getting these scars, these battle wounds, we've gained some insights on this zone, at least I have, and I think that's invaluable. Because had I had that kind of information with my monk, probably would have had a lot easier time. So, yeah, very important. Even if you die, it's still really important to get some information. And in fact, I think dying helps you remember it, because you're tied to your character. This game is very unique in that way. A lot of these older games are like that, too. There's very little convenience. Uh, if you die, you got a lot invested in your character, and there's very few quick fixes in this game. I think, like, resurrections, and even those, they cost a lot. And uh, GMs can res you if, like, the server crashed or, or whatever. And we did get XP bonus during the, the holidays there, uh, and Christmas, and Hanukkah, what have you. But that is, that's far and few between, so, yeah. Now, another, another tip here is you're going to want to have a timer, because the mobs appear to have about 22 minutes... Uh, that's the magic number. At least that's what the general consensus was on Alakazam. And that's when they respawn. So you want to invest in a $5 egg timer or a stopwatch, whichever floats your boat and doesn't kill your immersion. Keep that in mind. It, it, it might be a really good idea. <laughs> a wind-up clock, have it handy. Because, uh, well, these guys, they, they stop for no man. And 
that when it goes off, when that little alarm goes off, it's going to be like, hey, <laughs> shit's about to go down. And it is, because these guys aren't going away. They're just going to automatically reincarnate. So you got to be quick on your feet, and you got to re be ready to make those snap decisions so your group mates don't die, and everything goes well. That's the idea of this game. you got to keep progressing until you're 60 and running around goofing off. I don't know what level 60s actually do, because I've never been there. <laughs> but I'm getting close. I'm getting close. Yeah. And that's what we're doing here. We're, we're making snap decisions. We're, we're attacking these mobs. We're doing pretty good. I don't have an egg timer. Probably should have gotten one. <laughs> but, uh, hey, you know, that's why I burn food in the kitchen. I don't have an egg timer. So, yeah, I'm doing a lot for the egg timer business, I think. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not really into them. Stopwatches or, or any of that. Actually, I don't even own a stopwatch. That's weird, but whatever. And, uh, yeah, we're in this little room now. We've, we've gotten everything solid. We've gotten everything going good. We're going to pick up the cleric here soon enough. And uh, we've, got, we've got a chamois, Betty. That is really good. So now we're, now we're doing quite well for ourselves. We're, we've, we've almost have gotten ourselves into a full group, which you have that XP bonus. And I believe even dungeons have XP bonuses, so, or at least most of them do. And, I, and this one certainly is, is not the exception. So yeah, that is that is a general rundown of this zone for the most part. If you want to find out anything else, you can check Alakazam. I'm sure there's other websites out there as well. Uh, the the P99 wiki is a pretty reliable page, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Not that I'm <laughs> entirely uh, knowledgeable about the zone, but yeah. Now, uh, one thing is really kind of important here is you want to have your magic resistance up, because obviously the ghouls here root like crazy. I don't have my magic uh, resistance buff yet, the Endure Magic. That comes in the next line of spells at 19. I did get my other uh, Endure spells uh, at, at 14, but they're not going to be very useful here. Uh, that said, I do have Cancel Magic up there at the very top of my spell gems, which is really good if, if the tank gets, if the tank and or puller gets uh, rooted, I can just go over there and cast it off. You can get the hell out of dodge, and we're all doing well. So, you might want to have that ready just in case, because uh, sometimes those those roots can last a long time. Same thing with Lord Guck, and they're really annoying as being as as being a pooler. Uh, it just really irks me uh, to get that <laughs> uh, as my as my monk. I just can't take it because you do such a good job at splitting, and then you get rooted, and you you have a you know you have two mobs, and you can't do anything. You, you either have to feign death again, or just stand there and take it. And you end up looking like a chump when you show up with half health, and the cleric's like, oh, God, not this guy again. Anyway, uh, I've got an empty hotkey down there, and it's really kind of annoying to me now looking at it. I, I should have filled that with, like, I don't know, shout, train to zone, something, uh, even even assist, because I could have assisted uh, the, the the main tank here, Nolm, and then... A targeted on the on the mob he was attacking, and then just nuke it, uh, because that's basically my job from here on out. We picked up the cleric, uh, and uh, his name's Hams over there. He's the one that got the the blood stained mantle and and all those little bits of bronze armor. So yeah, he's the lower level cleric, and apparently that means that he's going to be the healer, and I'm going to be casting my undead DDs, which are kind of the strong suit of clerics. Uh, Second only to our heels, obviously. But yeah, he is two or maybe just one level my junior, but uh, he'll be healing. And that is basically our group makeup. We've got a shaman, we've got an enchanter, and we've got uh, a paladin, a monk, and another healer, another cleric, and then myself. And that's a pretty good pretty good makeup for a group in, in this zone. And in pretty much any other zone, I think. And yeah, that's... That's all she wrote, pretty much. We've done well for ourselves. We're going to have another part here coming up. And that, that should be it. I'll head back into the zone uh, in a few levels. But one really cool thing I wanted to mention, I was, I was looking up other games that are not entirely the same in, in certain regards, but similar nonetheless. And Baldur's Gate caught my attention. And I was kind of looking at the different clerics and different RPGs and MMORPGs, what have you. And what was cool about the clerics in, in that game is that their healing spells doubled as undead damage spells. And I just thought that would be such a cool thing if that was in EverQuest. Uh, and I don't know if the idea ever cropped up in the developers' minds, but it's just so cool because clerics already have to scrape just to get enough platinum for decent armor. To have something as cost-effective as a, a, a spell that doubles is also 
you know, damaging would be just great. Um, that said, I do I do really very much like the build of the cleric class in EverQuest. We do get very little <laughs> in the way of melee skills. That is our sore spot. Bash would have been nice. I know clerics got that later on and other expansions. Somebody told me about that. Although it wasn't really all it was cracked up to be. I think it was very... <laughs> very diminished in its quality. Not very many skill ups there for that, for for bash. But I don't know. Anything would have helped. More melee, something. And I know clerics uh, got better as more expansions came out. But uh, we're stuck in classic, so that means I'm gimped. And uh, yeah. Now one other thing I wanted to point out here is that I probably should have a lesser undead DD ward of undead up there in my gems just in case because if I get aggro and some people have died or something or were very close to making or breaking you know it's good to be able to cast in between swings or in between mobs hitting you and you can't do that with your your newest undead direct damage spell so might want to keep a, a lesser one up so you can at least throw some kind of damage out there and possibly save everything that, that might be possible because you're going to have death beetles they are the nuisance they're going to interrupt your spells even if they're light or green cons light blue or green cons and you'll notice also uh, i have been sitting on the couch that is my new favorite spot it's very safe i had not aggroed any of the death beetles from there uh, i did sit by the by the door a couple times early on and that was uh, that was unfortunate but yeah <laughs> now the only thing I have to worry about by sitting on this couch is this dark bone skeleton that occasionally spawns over here by these stairs and he is a bastard I I'll tell you that but uh, well that's that's about it that's the only problem so can you keep that in mind if you're gonna sit there uh, definitely is not the best thing in the world but you you'll, you'll you'll survive and it is a nice little cozy couch you gotta share sometimes but still still good little spot my gnome liked it said his little tush there Anyway, that's about it for now. We're going to get on to the third part here soon enough, and then back on over to the monk. Uh, thank you all for watching and, and tolerating my, my ramblings, and I'll uh, catch you all later.